use. Let's. So let's take a look at the following example in which we're going to estimate the rest mass energy of a single neutrino particle. So our goal is to use the supernova that took place in 1987 to estimate what the rest mass energy of our neutrino is. So we have a supernova that took place a distance of 1.7 times 10 to the 5 light years away from Earth. Earth. Now, when the supernova took place, it released, let's say, two neutrinos at the same exact time. So we have neutrino 1 and neutrino 2. Eventually, these neutrinos will reach the Earth, so they travel the same exact distance. Now, we measure that neutrino 1 reaches the Earth 10 seconds before neutrino number 2, and we measure the kinetic energy of neutrino 1 to be 20 mega electron volts, while the kinetic energy of neutrino 2 is 10 mega electron volts. Using this information, we want to calculate what the rest mass energy of our neutrino is. So we're going to break this problem into three steps. So we have in step one, we want to basically find the equation for the velocity of our neutrino. In step two, we want to calculate the equation that gives us the change in time between our two neutrinos. And in step three, we want to calculate the rest mass energy of the neutrino. So let's begin with step one. So we want to use the relativistic energy equation for our neutrino. So the relativistic energy E is equal to the kinetic energy plus the rest mass energy. Now recall that the energy term E can also be written in the following way. So we have mc squared divided by this factor and equal kinetic energy plus the rest mass energy. Now from experiments that have been conducted in labs on Earth, we know that the rest mass energy of our neutrino is very, very small. And so because the kinetic energy that is given to us is much greater than the rest mass energy or the presumed rest mass energy of the neutrino, we can approximate that this, the total energy, is approximately equal to the kinetic energy term because this is very, very small, so we approximate this to be zero. So, we get this result. Now, we can solve for the velocity by rearranging and solving for v. So, velocity is approximately equal to the speed of light in a vacuum multiplied by the square root of 1 minus the square mc squared divided by k, where k is the kinetic energy. So, basically, in our next step, we want to use a binomial expansion to get rid of the square root root to get rid of this one-half exponent and we're going to use this binomial expansion. So from mathematics we know that 1 minus x to the power of one-half is equal to 1 minus one-half x plus and we have the third term, the fourth term, and fifth term and so on. Now the terms after the first two terms are very very small. So we can approximate that this this is approximately equal to 1 minus 1 half times x. So, notice that this term is this term. So we have 1 minus where this entire term is x to the power of 1 half. So that means the velocity is approximately equal to c multiplied by, so we're using the binomial expansion, we have 1 minus 1 half of the x term, which is given by the square of mc squared divided by k. So we have the velocity is approximately equal to this, and this is our velocity equation for our neutrino. Let's move on to step 2. Now we want to calculate the time. So recall that the velocity is equal to distance divided by the time. We can rearrange and solve for the time. So the time that it takes either one of these neutrinos to travel is equal to the distance, let's say that's given by d divided by the velocity. Now from this equation we can replace the velocity v with the right sign and we get the following result. 
and notice because this is an approximation, this technically should not be equal to, but approximately equal to. So now we can rearrange this by bringing this term to the numerator side and we raise that to negative one and we get the following result. So the time is approximately equal to this. So now we want to use another binomial expansion. So we, we basically want to get rid of this negative one exponent. So recall that one minus x to the negative one is equal to one plus x plus dot 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 to the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Those terms are negligible. And so we can approximate that this is equal to or approximately equal to one plus x. Now in this case, the x term is one half multiplied by this entire quantity to the power of two. So basically we see that the time is approximately equal to d divided by c multiplied by one plus we have x where x is this entire term and notice the negative one exponent disappears. So now we know that the time it takes one neutrino to travel from the supernova to earth is given by this equation. But what's the change in time? The change in time between our two neutrinos. To find the change in time we take the time it takes neutrino 2 to travel and subtract that the time it takes neutrino 1 to travel. So delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 and we use this equation. We bring out the d divided by c common term and we get this result. Now when we open up our parentheses the ones will cancel and then we can bring out our term m squared c4 divided by 2 and we get the following result. So this equation gives us our change in time between our two neutrinos and we know that is 10 seconds. So now in step 3 we can take this equation delta t is equal to this and solve for m c squared the rest mass energy. So first let's solve for m squared c to the fourth so we basically we take this we leave it on this side and bring everything else to that side. So m to the 2 c to the 4 is equal to 2 multiplied by c multiplied by delta t divided by d the distance between our two objects multiplied by this quantity 1 k2 squared minus 1 k1 squared where k2 is the energy of particle 2 and k1 is the kinetic energy of particle 1 and now we take the square root of both sides and we solve for mc squared so mc squared is given by this equation so we basically now can solve for our rest mass energy. Now the distance is given in light years but we want to use meters. So we multiply this quantity by how many meters are found in one light year. 1 times 10 to the 16 meters. We get this distance in meters and now we plug in this distance, the speed of light, the delta t 10 seconds and the energies where k2 is 10 mega electron volts and K1 is 20 mega electron volts and we find that the energy is this quantity in mega electron volts and we 